Hello and welcome to Clay Creators. Uh, today's model is the Key Stage 2 version of the Sphinx and Pyramids and hopefully we can get something looking like this uh, towards the end. We will need our scales, creator cards and tools, um, <clears throat> if possible an airtight container, um, anything with a seal, lunchbox, Tupperware, things like that, absolutely fine. And obviously our pots of clay. Before we get started though, I'm gonna go over the key facts for the Pyramid and Sphinx. Um, please take it on board, have a good listen. Um, I'm sure there's some new information in there, um, just in case mum and dad decide to uh, throw out a quiz later on. So, fact number one. Um, the pyramids were built as burial places for pharaohs. Um, if you're not sure what a pharaoh is, a pharaoh was basically the leader or the king, um, queen of the Egyptians. Um, this would basically be their final resting place before they moved on to the afterlife, um, which again comes from the Egyptian uh, religion. Fact number two, um, the largest of the pyramids, the ones that you kind of see more regularly, the largest one, um, which is called the Great Pyramid of Giza. Um, it stands around about 146 meters tall, and it was at one point the largest man-made structure uh, in the world. That title basically stood with it for around about 3,800 years. Um, that was until the Eiffel Tower was built, um, which then obviously took over that title. Fact number three, um, Estimated, um, we can't be 100% sure, but it's estimated that it was, took 23 years uh, to build the biggest one, so the Great Pyramid of Giza, roughly 23 years to build it. Fact number four, um, the pyramids are one of the seven wonders of the world, um, and if you're not sure, the other um, wonders of the world are, um, we've got the Great Wall of China, the Colosseum, uh, Christ the Redeemer, Petra, um, Taj Mahal, um, Chichen Itza, I think that's pronounced right, and finally Michu Picchu, okay? Uh, fact number five, um, Egyptians built uh, sphinxes all around, okay? They built them around important areas like tombs and temples, um, and basically they're there to stay guard. It was their symbol of a guardian. Fact number six, uh, the most famous sphinx, which is the one that we are going to be building today, the bigger one, um, it's the biggest one. It's, it's again. It goes along the same lines. It's the Great Sphinx of Giza, um, and it's the largest, one of the largest statues in the world. It faces the sunrise, so where it's built, it faces the sunrise, um, and it basically stands guard for the pyramids uh, and, and the tombs of Giza. And finally, fact number seven. Um, it's just about the size of the Sphinx. Um, it is. It's, it's massive. It's 241 feet long. It's 20 feet high and 66 feet tall. Okay, let's get started by mixing our main color. This is gonna be a sand color, um, so it's mainly made up of yellow, but there is a little red, blue, and white in there as well. So um, firstly, get your scales on, um, switched on, make sure they're at zero, making sure they're also on the grams unit. Um, I'm all set. So we'll start off with our yellow, which is our biggest measurement. Um, we are looking for 16 grams of yellow, so it's a big chunk of yellow. So 16, zero, zero of yellow. Fantastic. On to our red. Our red's going to be measured out at 1090. Sorry, <laughs> one dot. Nine zero. So one. One dot. Oops. Fantastic. Um, then on to our blue. <coughs> Remember to always put your clay away, get the lids back onto the pots as well, keeping it nice and fresh. So blue is going to be 1.20, so 1.20, a little bit smaller, oops, and the red. And then finally the white, <coughs> we are going to go to three dot five zero. So good measurement of clay here. Good amount to get a mix. Going. 
And once you've got all those, you can get, then give them a good mix, get them all mixed together, blended together, and we should get a really good sand color. Um, and we'll obviously use some of that straight away. And we'll then save some uh, for the pyramids later on. Um, we'll get started by doing uh, the Sphinx first, um, body, um, and then we'll move on to the legs, um, tail, and finish off with the head and the mane. So this may take you a little bit just because there's so much clay. If you need a little help, obviously ask uh, whoever's there guiding you to, to give you a hand. That's a good, good mix. Everything's blended in nicely. So big, big chunk of clay. Okay, but like I say, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll start off with this thing. So we're going to do the body. Now the body is done in three stages. If I bring over the older, uh, the original version, um, if you can see, there are three different levels on the body. So we're going to measure out three different measurements and we'll shape each one, stick them on top of each other. Okay, so the first measurement is going to be the bottom one um, and it's going to be the biggest one. We're gradually going to make them smaller as we go up on the body. So the biggest one that we're going to be doing, um, so it scales on again, sorry, is going to be 2.75. So 2.75. So we'll do a little bit of work on each one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to measure each one out. So I've got my biggest section. Then we're going to go to 2.50, so 2.50. And then finally, the last one there is 2.00, so 2 grams. Okay, rest of your clay, you can put that into your airtight container for the time being. And we'll get started on the body. <clears throat> so, we'll start with the biggest, like I said, and work our way up. You can pop the others to the top and know that they're out of the way and you know which one's which. Um, give the clay a little stretch, a little freshen up, and what we want is our starting um, shape is a nice smooth round ball. So I'm going to just roll this together in my hands, get rid of those lines, the lumps and bumps. You may want to use your work surface or your workstation. Try and get rid of everything. You want a nice smooth round ball to start off with. That's going to be our general starting point every time we start with a new shape. Um, so I've got my ball. All I'm going to do, I'm going to roll this out slightly. Um, I'm going to use the ruler on the back of my creator card to kind of give me that guide as how far I've got to roll it out. Um, but this is going to change slightly as we shape and as we uh, kind of design this, uh, mold it slightly. It's going to change the length anyway. So it's just a guide. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to roll this out to roughly eight centimeters. So it could be a little bit shorter. It's not a problem. It could be a little more. It's fine. So all I'm going to do is gently roll. Let's move these out of the way a little bit for you. Gently roll on the workstation, trying to get even pressure all the way along. So that nice and even. So I'm just over seven centimeters at the moment. Like I say it's going to end up going longer as we shape this. So I've got a nice even rollout. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to press down and flatten this out by just working my way along. I'm just going to use one finger. Now, obviously, as I press down, this has now become longer, so it's going to be closer to that eight centimeters that we're looking for. We'll turn it over. Now, I'm trying to make it nice and even. So we've got a nice even shape. Now, the thing with the Sphinx, and we're going to be adding this or trying to do this kind of detail. Um, as you go is it's very damaged. It's brickwork in the real life. So it's kind of obviously the bricks falling apart. There's a little bit of damage. So if your bodies aren't exactly perfect, it's nice and smooth. It's not a problem. We're going to, like I say, we're going to try and make it look marked and worn and damaged anyway. So I've leveled it out. We've got a nice even shape all the way along. So we're going to do the same again with the next size down. Um, 
and then add it onto the top. And obviously with it being less clay, if you've got the same kind of depth, so we should um, get a slightly smaller shape on top. So as you work your way up, it's gonna get smaller and closer at the top and it's gonna be a little bit thinner at the top. So when you look down on the top, you're gonna get the same effect as we do with the pyramid that we'll get to later on. So same effect, rolled out. Now you can roll this one out. We're, we're looking to get this one to around about seven centimeters in total. So I've done the same, I've rolled out, just gonna press down, give it a little flip. Now again, it needs to be a little bit shorter. I'm fantastic. Gently place it on top, give it a little press down. If you need to tweak it slightly, and press down again on top. It's fine. And then finally, we're going to do the same with the last one. Now, the front, which I'm going to class as this end, should be at a little angle. Okay. So as I'm going, I'm just gently pressing back slightly so it's not straight. I'm going to press it so it comes back a little bit. So repeat that process again with the third and final measurement that we've done for the top part of the body. This time we're looking for around about six and a half centimeters at total. So again, gently rolling out. And repeating the pressing down process. Brilliant. Okay. And then once you're happy with that, just pop it on again. Little press down, little, uh, little squeeze, little squash. Get it into the right place and again at the front i want it to be kind of back a little bit i'm going to press that down don't want it going up too high you want a nice just solid shape and this is the point now where we're going to try and put some more extra lines so obviously we've already got the main lines because of the body shape uh, the way that we put the body together but if you want to try and make it look a little bit more worn <clears throat> a little bit more damaged <clears throat> excuse me just take your tool, just give a few more lines, a few nicks, a few, a few bits of damage. If you don't want to, it's absolutely fine as well. Um, it's just if you're trying to go for that real authentic look. So I'm just taking my tool, I'm just giving it a few scores across on there. each one but try not to damage the actual lines that we've got already on there okay so if I just bring it to the camera hopefully it kind of shows a few of these bits of damage again you don't need to go overboard it's not a major issue if that's not what you want to do okay so remember the front needs a little bit of <coughs> a backwards lean Fantastic. Okay, straight on to the back legs now. So we're going to get the scales on again. Get to your clay. <clears throat> and for the back legs, we're going to do two. And we are going to measure out at 0 0.40. So, oh, well, one. And we're going to do that again. Brush your clay away again. And the back legs, similar process. Give them a quick stretch. Get rid of those lines, those lumps. And we just need to start with nice smooth round balls again. Uh, all we're going to do with these ones, we're going to do the same sort of thing, but this instead of flattening them um, down, all we're going to do is roll them into little sausages like we did before. This time we're only going to roll gently and then leave them measured at a roundabout. Anywhere between one and a half and two centimeters would be fine. And we're just going to place these at the back of him. So if I turn the body to face you, I'm going to just place these on each side. And I'll show you how far along in a moment. Just give it a little gentle press against the body. So it's not too far along. It's still the back legs, but you don't want, you want to leave a little bit of a gap at the back. So if I bring it up to you, that's kind of the distance off the back that we're looking for. Okay, 
Again, give it a little detail if you want. If you're going with that uh, kind of damaged look, a few lines in there, a few marks. Uh, if you want to try and put his little paws on at the front of those, just give a couple of lines down there. Okay, it should be starting to come together nicely on there. We're going to do the tail, which curls up around the back leg. Um, the tail, so again, we're going to need more clay. Tail's weighed out at 0 0.30. So scales on again. Um, and it's going to curve around and come up your right back leg. I'll show you that in a moment. Similar process again, we're rolling out. This time I'm going to roll it a little bit thinner. I'm going to say it's going to attach underneath the body and it's just going to curve around. So all we're going to do, get rid of those lines like before, roll this one out again. And this time we're going to go for more of a three centimeter length. Okay. If want to give it a little bit of a press at one end it kind of flattened just one end so i'm just going to press down this will be the bit that goes under the body so i've just pressed one end so all we're going to do we're going to put that underneath at the back and kind of curve it round and up and over the leg which i will show you so i'm going to put that little bit that's dented underneath i'm going to curve it round the back and up onto the leg So if I show you, it is connected underneath there, and we've just curved it round, and it sits on top of the leg there, okay? Right, I'm going to put that into my airtight container now whilst we work on the head. So I'm going to swap this over, get the other clay out. Okay, so for the head and the mane, we're going to do two quick measurements, okay? The head's going to be measured out at um, 1.40, so 1.40. And the mane is going to be 0, uh, 0 0.75, so 0 0.75. Rest of the clay away, try not to let it touch uh, the rest of your model, keep them separate. To the side. Keep these two separate, I know you're the, they're similar sizes but you should be fine to uh, be able to spot which one's which. We'll start with the head. Again, give it a little stretch, get it back to that starting position of the smooth round, uh, round ball. Once we've got that. Now, with the head and the mane, we try not to. We're not going to do too much with it. It's um, the the actual sphinx is very. It's got a very damaged face, so we're going to kind of give it the outline and the, and the little looks of the eyes and the nose and the mouth. But you can change that if you want. If you want to maybe um, make it a little bit more cartoony, you can put eyes on here, like with the uh, pupils and the irises. That's absolutely fine. We're going to just kind of mark and try and make it look as as realistic as we can without going too far and making it impossible for you guys to do. So we're going to just put those marks in gently. And again, you might need to do that again um, once we've added the mean um, to the head, because as we are working, it kind of could squash it slightly with your other hand. So I'll try and guide you through it. Um, and then you can change things around afterwards if you really want to. Um, so what we're going to do, um, the bit that's sticking up in the air is kind of be where the face would be. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to gently give it a little press, just a very little gentle press and a push down. And it's kind of going to give it a flatter back. So the bit that's set onto the workstation is going to be the back. So right now, if you want to take a tool, just so you've got a reminder where everything's going to be, just put a little mouth on the top. 
you can make it a smile, you can make it a grump, it's not a problem. Uh, and again, I'm going to take my tool and I'm just going to kind of make dents for where the eyes would be. And we'll put a tiny, tiny nose on again. A little bit. Okay, so if I bring this to the camera without squishing too much, just so I've got an idea. And then a flatter back where we can place the mane around. Again, we'll do a little bit more work on the face as once we've got the mane on. But now we've got the kind of the outline. The mane, again, give it a quick stretch. And mane's a little bit of molding, um, which means you kind of use your fingers to kind of shape it a little bit. So we'll start off with our normal position, our normal ball. And what we want to do, we're going to try and make it a flat, uh, flat middle where the head will sit in, and we're going to wrap it kind of around the head. So what we'll do, like we have done with a few of the other bits, we're going to just give it a gentle roll out. Not too far, because this is, like I said, this is going to change, and we're going to mold this as we go along. So don't worry too much. As long as it's kind of even, that's the main thing. So I've rolled this out into a little sausage, even all the way along. Um, mine's measuring at three and a half centimeters, okay? Again, don't worry about that too much. What we're gonna do, we're gonna press down like we did before, but this time just in the middle to start off with. So I've got a nice even amount on either side, and I'm gonna press that down to give me two bigger bits in the middle, uh, outside, and a flat bit in the middle. Now that bit in the middle is where the head is gonna sit. The other bits on the outside are going to be the main that sticks out. So if you want to press a little bit, just to flatten these ones down a touch. And then we'll shape those in a minute. So at the moment, we're at this position. Flat in the middle, two raised up. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to shape those ones on the outside slightly by just giving them a little pinch because technically they're going to be kind of triangular. A little pinch. But like I say, don't worry too much about that. You can take your tool as well, kind of just flatten. Now if I bring it to the camera and I'll explain where these bits are for you, it might make a little bit more sense. I'm going to put the lines in so you can see which part it should be. Like I say, this is a bit of moulding with your hands, so don't worry too much if it's not exactly how you want it to be. We'll mould that in a moment. So if I bring that to you now, so very rough at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the head in, remembering that those bits around the outside, gently place it on. So at the moment, it's looking like this. Try not, try not to squash it too much. And I'm just going to bring that bit over the top, flatten it down so the thinner bit will sit on the top and the main will stick around the sides. So we should be looking at something like this across the top. And as I bring it around, that's where we are at at the moment. All I'm going to do is now bring it round and kind of shape it a little bit with my fingers, giving it a pinch on each side. And then before we go too far, I'm going to get that onto the body so it sits in the right place before we kind of mold um, the main around there. So if we get the body. And if I put it towards you, I'm obviously going to be putting the head at the end to face you. Okay. So if I just turn around quickly, pop it on the end. And then you just bring the main around a little bit with your hands, being, tr being gentle. Once you've got that in the right place, just give that mane a little bit of a pinch and a little bit of a shape. And once you have done all that, we need to put those lines in. If, if you haven't already when I did before, get those lines in with your tool. And we should have in the right place. Again, if you uh, need to go over the mouth again, 
and the little dents for the eyes. Now's the time to do that before the clay dries too much. So we should have this kind of look. Hopefully, that kind of looks like that from the back. And all we're going to do now is very, very, very tiny piece of clay for his nose or her nose. It's going to be a tiny, tiny pinch. As you can see on, on the face, it is it's going to be absolutely tiny. Now, again, it doesn't need to be too detailed. Again, the nose on the Sphinx is damaged. So a tiny, tiny pinch. All we're going to do, it should be really of a triangle, but if it's just a circle, it's not a problem. I've literally just rolled it into a ball. I'm going to place it between the eyes. And as I put it on there, all I'm going to do, I'm going to take my little tool again, a couple of little lines in there to try and make it look slightly damaged. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're kind of looking for the damaged look. And like I said before, if you want to change it up, if you don't want to go for this kind of look, if you want to put some white in and some um, some pupils, it's absolutely fine. If you want to do a little bit more detailed nose, it's your model. Do as you want in that aspect, okay? So I'm happy with that. I'm going to put that away and leave that in there for the moment whilst we do the front legs. The front legs are measured out at 0 0.6. Oh, so we're going to need two of them. And we will do a very similar sort of shape as we've done with the others. We're going to roll. We're going to sh um, Oops. We're going to roll. We're going to get rid of every all lumps and bumps. Um, I'm going to roll it out into a sausage again. We're going to try and flatten it, make it a little bit squarer. We're going to give it a flat end. It's going to go under the body at the front. So if I bring you the other one, so again you can see it connects underneath the body. So we'll flatten these ends. So again, as always, freshen the clay up, roll it out, give it a nice smooth finish if you can. give these a roll out so as long as your two legs are the same length um, it will be the right effect don't worry if it's not exactly the same length as what I'm going to go with so I'm going to roll out again nice and gentle again remember when we press down to flatten one end it's going to stretch it a little bit so if you make a decision I'm, I'm rolling out to four centimeters at the moment if you want to roll it a little bit shorter a little bit longer it's fine but like I say as long as your two both your legs are the same it's fine. Okay, so I've got my two legs pretty much the same there. Okay, so like I said, what we're going to do, one end, we're going to kind of press down and flatten. So I'm going to just do that now. One end, I've just chosen this end. I'm going to flatten it out. Same with the other leg. Flatten it out. And all that's going to do is the bit that's going to go underneath the body. Okay. I'm not going to put the detail on now. I'm going to do that once we've stuck it to the body. So I'm going to get the body and we're going to put the body on now. Okay, so the legs will then <clears throat> stick forward. So maybe <clears throat> just a little press in. And in the right place. Now at the moment my legs are kind of v-shaped but I'm going to stretch them back and put them directly straight forward. So once you've got them in the right place you can then add the details like we did before. A few lines, a few bits of damage. Now at the front of the paws um, I'm going to put the basically the front lines on. If his paws are there Like I say just a bit of damage along the legs, a few lines, and then make sure they're in the right place, nice and flat. 
stretching forward. Brilliant. Okay, so we should have <coughs> that kind of look from the front. Now that's basically the Sphinx finished. That can sit dry and whilst we work on the two pyramids. Okay, so I'm not going to. I don't need to put it back into the airtight container, but to save space for me to work on here, I'm just going to move this over onto the side. Now moving on to the pyramids, the pyramids are very, um, they have a good effect once you get them right. So you might not get it right straight away. Um, so you might have to pause the video and start again. It's not a problem. The clay is all the same color. So if you get it slightly wrong, it's not a problem. I'm going to give you measurements and guide as we work up. Um, bigger going smaller as you get to the top. So I'll give you measurements and lengths. But when you are working with it, it may be that yours is slightly off, slightly different. It's not a problem. As long as your pyramid continues to get smaller, it's not a problem if they aren't exactly the same as my measurements. OK, so we'll start with the bigger one um, and then we'll go on to the small one. So as you can see with the bigger one, we've got starting square and we work our way up to a tiny little point at the top. So what I'm saying about it again, smaller, you should kind of get that effect as you go along okay but we'll work on uh, on that as we go along so let's get started <clears throat> the first measurement you're going to need is 2.5 grams so 2.50 and that's going to be the biggest one that's the base across the bottom Now we're going to try and get this as square as possible. It's not always as easy because um, the as the clay dries, it will generally um, the lines that you put in the straight lines will kind of round up a little bit. So if we try and get it as flat as possible and as square as possible to start off with. So back to my starting position, my ball. Um, different people will do this in different ways. You may want to just squeeze with your fingers to get a square, or you might want to use um, the workstation depends on what you prefer. So you can start with the ball, and all we're going to do is press down. So we're looking for a depth. We're trying to make it nice and even. So if I pressed it down, <clears throat> my workstation is giving me a nice smooth surface. So we're at roughly the right depth. So we're looking for that kind of thickness. Now, obviously, I'm an oval shape at the moment, so I'm going to take my tool. I'm going to try and give it some edges. So I take my tool and kind of just press one side. It will give me a flat side. I then need to work on the others and turn it into a square whilst using my other hand to kind of keep it flattened. Turn it over. So as you can see, now we can't, as we're working along, we start to get a square shape. Okay. Now the measurement you basically want to be trying to start off with roughly four centimeters. So I'm a little bit short. I'm at 3.5, which means my thickness is a bit too much. So I'm going to just give it a little bit pressed again, both ways. And I know I've, I've added a little bit on there, so it's stretched it out. So just go back again, square up the edges as much as you can. So the important thing is, as we're working our way up, I say it doesn't matter what measurement I am saying, as long as yours is slightly smaller, you'll get the effect. So I'm just oh, perfectly on four centimeters now. So I'm like that depth, and I'm nice and square. Okay. So that's going to be my base. Um, the next measurement for the next step up is, um, oops, sorry, is two grams. So two zero zero. And the length or the measurement along the side will be 3.5 centimeters on there. Again, give or take. Um, and like I said, the important thing is that it is just a slightly smaller than the one that you've just done. Keep putting the clay away, keeping it nice and fresh. So again, back to a nice smooth ball. Just speed through this one to make it into a square sort of shape. 
and then I'll head down to finish off. So we're going to repeat this process quite a bit um, to get these pyramids done. But at the end, we'll then have um, a few little pointy bits. So it kind of goes down to you kind of molding again to get the points at the top. Um, again, if you find it a little bit tricky, don't worry. It's okay. You can have another go. Start again. And you can also ask, obviously, your, your guide that's there with you. So I've gone again, I've got another nice square, just so I am a little bit short, I'm at three centimeters, so I'm gonna press that down a little bit, do the same again. Square up the sides. Now at that point I can then put over mine, my base, place it on the top of the base, and I know all the way around the outside I can still see a little bit of the model below, uh, the base, the section below. So now I'm okay, give that a gentle push. So now I've got my base, I've got my second step, and looking from above, you should be able to see just about a bit around all the way around the outside. So if not, just give it a little tweak, a little press. And pop that to the side. Okay, next one, we're gonna we're gonna drop down again. We're gonna go to 1.50. Always make sure my scales are back at zero. So 1.50. And again, the measurement again drops very similar. Um, this time we're down to three. 1.50, fantastic. Uh, so we're looking for around about three centimeters. Again, always trying to get roughly the same depth as your other sections. Again, moving on, if you can see a pattern coming, we're just dropping by 0 0.5 every time. So now we're down to, um, down to one gram, so 1.00. And the same again. So you probably will get better and quicker as you go. The more you do these, obviously we're doing it a lot um, of the same thing over and over again. But you'll practice, obviously by the end of it, you will think, oh, actually, I've really gotten used to that. I can do that quite easily now. Okay, so the measurement on this one, again, if you've followed the uh, pattern, should be roughly around about two and a half centimeters now. I'm gonna say one more time, do not panic, or do not worry if it's not quite, as long as your pyramid's getting the right effect, it doesn't matter if they're slightly off. My pyramid's coming along nicely. If I hold it up to you, you should be able to see that it gradually is getting smaller and smaller. And they're all pretty much roughly the same depth. Okay, on to the next. Drop again down to 0 0.5.
And then we're going to get to the real fiddly ones, the tricky ones. Okay, the measurement again this time. If you've not already guessed what we're dropping it down to, we're going to drop it down to two centimeters. And then on to the next one, 0 to 5, so we're getting quite small now, so it's going to get a little bit trickier now. Okay. Again, it might be that you might, might need a little bit of help when you get really small. Give it a go, have a little try, don't panic. Um, try and get the smaller bits done now to be honest <clears throat> you guys have smaller fingers you might be able to get this done without any help you might be better than us adults so give it a shot okay so this time <clears throat> excuse me we are looking for a roundabout 1.2 centimeters so again it's just over the one centimeter one but not as far as the one and a half. Fits on nicely. And then we get to the really small ones now, okay. <clears throat> and then to a 0 0.10, so 0, 1, 0. Same again into that square. Now what I do when we get to a small say I often have to use my nail to kind of give it the other side and give it a little press down. Now there's no real measurement on the creator card for this. You're kind of going to have to go for feel. So once you think you've got it kind of the right uh, depth, have a little look, pick it up, pop it onto the top. If it's about right, then okay. If it's not, give it a little bit more work. I'm happy with that. And when you're at this stage, if you're not looking at your pyramid and you're not 100% happy, just give the edges a little push in. You may want to lie it on the surface, give it a little push. That gives it, obviously, that will give it a nice flat side. Again, just being gentle, not pressing too much. You should get the proper kind of effect going up on each one so if I bring it again bring it to the camera that's kind of the shape that we are looking for all the way along and now we're going to get to a couple of really really tiny ones okay so onto your creator card and we're going to go for the 0.5 ball measurement which is the smallest one on there remember when you're measuring on your uh, on the ball side as in uh, on that the ball measurement don't flatten the clay out. The clay needs to be left in a ball shape. So it's only going to be a tiny, tiny little pinch, but I'm going to roll it into a ball and then place it on. And I still need to be able to see around the outside. When I'm looking from on top, I still need to be able to see the guide, the uh, the actual circle of the 0.5. So once I've got that, again, like I say, it's going to get really, really fiddly. I'm going to use my nail again. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to use my finger and my nail and my tool. Just going to... Turn that into a square, flatten that. And place that one on. Try and get in the middle. And then finally, our last one is just a little pinch. So it's going to generally be smaller. You try and get a smaller one. Um, than the 0 0.5 um, so it's just a tiny little pinch with your fingers and to be honest you need to kind of do this so I would obviously bring it on 
put it on oh it's quite it's the same size as 0.5 so i need to half that i need it to be smaller than the one i've just put on so i've got a tiny tiny ball and all i'm going to do is try and turn that into a kind of a point a triangle right at the very top very very tricky all i'm going to do is going to pinch it to give it a kind of a point at the top and then i'm going to put it on right in the very middle so at the moment it's just a point i'm going to then do the same on the sides kind of give it the same sort of shape as the rest of the pyramid. I'm very happy with how that has come out. So we're looking at that sort of shape and that kind of finish. Okay. So that's the main, the bigger pyramid done. We're going to do the same again, just with smaller measurements, and we'll have the smaller pyramid alongside. So again, I'm just going to move that over. Now the smaller one, smaller measurements, um, smaller uh, kind of shapes to build, same sort of shape, obviously this is square, but it's obviously it's going to get trickier quicker. Um, first measurement we're going to start off with is basically the base again, it's going to be 0, 9, 0. So again, already we're really, we're really small to start off with. So 0, 9, 0. Stretch it out, freshen it up, get rid of those lines, and again get that made into a square. Now the length that we're looking for again on our creator card this time is 2.5, um, so two and a half centimeters again roughly, which uh, if you can. So I've made it into my square, I've flattened it out. Use my tool. two and a half centimeters okay moving on so again slightly smaller we're going to go to 0 0.60 so again smaller again Struggling with that measurement. Okay. And this time we're going to try and go for around about two centimeters um, length. Okay. On to the next. <clears throat> down to zero three zero. And again, the same pattern. We're going to drop down to one point five centimeters. stretch so yeah 1.5 if you can and again if that's the right measurement for your pyramid So again, I'm getting the same effect as I was before. Okay. Down again to zero one five. And 
and once more try and get rid of those lines if you can start up with a nice smooth ball and then get onto the shaping looking for around about one centimeter on your card if you can again you might need to go on to kind of using your nail now on, on the end of your finger and onto the top again making it nice and even okay Going on to your creator card now, now we're going to go on to the 0.5 centimeter um, ball. So again, remember to be able to see the outside of the, uh, the marker there. It's just a small, small pinch. It's a bit too big. And same again, try and turn that into a nice even square. Now after that, after, sorry, after this one, it's uh, quite tricky again because we're so small. It's like we did on the last one. It's a little bit of feel, a little bit of mold rather than an actual measurement. So just a tiny, tiny little pinch. Again, go to the roundabout 05. It's going to be just a little bit smaller than the 0.5. And finally, we'll do that tiny, tiny little pinch like we did before with the triangle at the top. So no real measurement here, just a little bit smaller than the 0.5. Square it off if you can. And place it on the top. I've actually got a little too much clay there, so I'm going to take that off. Try that again. A little bit too much clay. So that was me making my zero, my ball there a little bit too big. So I'm just going to do that again. And then finally, like I say, that tiny, tiny little triangle pinch to go on the very, very top. With a tiny 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 pinch and we'll try and do the same as you did before with the bigger pyramid where you pinch the top put it on the top and then pinch the other side as well just to kind of make it into that point give the rest of the pyramid a little bit of a press i'm going to get it happy get it into the shape that you're happy with and again we are looking for that kind of effect all the way down Get the pyramid shape, okay. A little bit of leftover clay, which we can use um, with three play in a moment. So if I bring all the models up, we are looking something like this. Whichever effect you want to go for for your photos. There we go. All right. So, like I say, onto the free play time now. Um, free play, you can build alongside, you can build uh, add to, you can build something completely different. I uh, will normally use one gram of every color, so way out on your scales, one gram of every color. Use that as your guide for free play. Um, if you want to use more than one, obviously it's then one gram, uh, sorry, it's five grams in total, so it's you can balance that out between uh, measurements. Uh, if you're running low on clay, um, head over to the clay grater store. Um, so www.claygraters.com uh, forward slash shop and you'll be able to order more clay. At the same time, if you are thinking that you might be finding the scales a little bit tricky and you want to drop down and try key stage one where we use measuring spoons, um, same place uh, to order the, uh, the spoons. We can get them to you as well. Um, and finally, um, Please don't forget to try and download the, uh, the activity sheets, um, our word searches, crosswords, things like that uh, to go alongside uh, our models that we've done today. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.